Redditors who have served in submarines. What is something not many people know about being inside one? Way late to the party, but I'll add a couple of items. You Oakland Hellbent already gave a good summary, so I'll keep it short. I was on Madison class boomers 40 years ago, so this is pretty old news. First up, there's no team on earth like a submarine crew. One example, admittedly carefully crafted, is stores load day. Worst, most butt busting day of your life. You're getting ready to go on patrol for 10 weeks. There are two hatches barely big around enough for one large grown man to climb down through. Every item that 143 man crew will consume has to go down through those two hatches, pass hand to hand from sailor to sailor. All the food, paper towels, toilet paper, cleaning items, you name it. Tons of materials, all packed small enough to fit through those hatches. On that day, every last person on the boat, from the captain on down to the lowest recruit, participated beginning to end. No complaints, just get it done. Second up, don't frick with someone on submarines, especially early in patrol. People have 10 whole weeks to scheme their revenge. That could be a whole thread all by itself. Best example I ever heard of, one of the chief petty officers loved Snickers bars, had a small stash. One of the other CPOs stole one on day 2 or 3 of patrol. The thief then bragged about how he was going on a diet. The victim thought about it, and decided the offender's belt was the best place to attack. Now, anyone in the military knows about those web belts, that are infinitely adjustable. One size fits all, just cut off the excess webbing when you buy a new one and you're good to go. The victim, once a week, would trim about one stroke four to a one stroke two off the thief's belt. The guy kept losing pounds, starving himself, but his goddamn belt kept getting tighter and tighter. When we returned from patrol and tied up to the tender, the victim gave the thief an envelope with all the little pieces of his belt in it. My favorite memory, after several years of service, I got senior enough and trusted enough so I got to hang with the older guys who knew what it was about. We were on maneuvering watch, meaning traveling on the surface until we got past the continental shelf where we could dive. The chief of the boat told me to come topside with him and help secure the deck from maneuvering watch. We strapped into safety harnesses and walked the deck, turning down the cleats. We got to the bow, nothing but a harness and a rope keeping us from disappearing into the sea, and looked back at the sleek sub hull. The sun was going down and it was just gorgeous. He said let's have a cigarette before we go below. We lit up and looked at the beautiful world around us for the last time in 10 weeks, and right then a pod of dolphins started pacing the boat. We watched them for about 2 cigarettes, then went below and closed the hatch. That last bit was beautiful. If you're tall forget about running on the treadmill, unless you want to run bent over and wind up with spinal problems. I'm surprised they even let tall people serve on a sub. I served on a sturgeon class in the early to mid 90s. It's not as claustrophobic as it seems. You just sort of get used to it. It's extremely still, since there's no waves like on the surface, and you're not going very fast at all. It feels like you're standing still most of the time. The food is good at the beginning of a deployment. By the middle, it has descended to 5 year old cans of 3 bean salad. It is relatively unmilitaristic. We took our job seriously, but they had to remind us not to refer to the officers by their first names. Starboard clear, Jeff, ahem, Captain Jeff, Sailor. The lack of sunlight makes even small cuts and scrapes take forever to heal. I remember trying to slide while playing softball and getting some road rash on my arm, right before we went out for a few weeks. What was originally just some missing skin turned into a nasty thick scab that just wouldn't go away. I think it's the lack of vitamin D your body produces from sunlight. On my boat, I was guilty of this too. A bunch of us had fresh tattoos and got underway like 3 days later. What was a 1 week heal turned into a month. After months on patrol your eyes don't focus so well on distant objects after not needing to focus on much beyond 20 feet. For a while after patrol. My uncle helped design the Sea Wolf class submarine. Primarily the electronics in the bridge computer systems. 
He was present during a test run which included a mixture of experienced submariners, other navy and some civilian contractors. Not long into the test run there was a loud bang and a civilian was found in one of the toilets covered in his own crap. Apparently the toilets on a sub have many valves and this guy reversed the process and blew the contents out of the bowl rather than suck it down. Apparently that's a common problem with the sea wolves. One of my instructors told me the crew of the Sea Wolf brought a model of the sub with chocolate fondue shooting out of the top to the sub ball because they're known for blowing sand tanks in board so often. Sturgeon and Ohio class sailor here. On the Sturgeon class boat, we tied a rope tied athwart ship from side to side across the middle. Before diving in a test depth, it drooped a couple of feet. Never noticed how much the boat compressed before that. That's pretty nuts awesome terrifying. Served on a Los Angeles class. Most people are on an 18 hour day, so you're on watch for 6 hours, means doing your primary job. Off watch for 6 hours, means doing all the other crap you have to do, and ideally sleeping for 6 hours. In reality, though, you rarely get to sleep for 6 hours. Your off watch work often runs over, the on watch dude has to take a crap, so you have to take over until he gets back. Though you'll make him pay for that another time, and the submarine runs drills that involve the whole crew almost every day. So if it happens while you're supposed to be sleeping, you can sleep when you're dead. Also, we had pizza night once a week. You'd have to find a buddy who will eat the same toppings and call up to cruise mess at least 30 minutes before you got off watch. But it was pretty nice. The fleet has switched over to 8 16s now. 8 hours of protected sleep is now the norm. A nuclear engineer friend who served 5 years once told me he never will eat coleslaw again. I asked why. He said to imagine 300 or so sailors all sick with food poisoning because of bad coleslaw at the same time in a sub. Enough said. Now imagine 5000 on a carrier. It happened at least 3 times during the 5 years I was in. Everyone called it the double dragon because you'd have severe diarrhea and vomiting at the same time. My dad's story. He served on the USS Kentucky way back when, and due to some logistics error, all they had to eat was basically beef stroganoff. He's like it it's not that bad, I can live with this. But when you're on a sub, and you're cramped, tempers run wild, they start fighting with the metal knives and forks. So command takes them away and gives them plastic knives and forks. Fighting stops for a bit, but then tempers flare and they fight with the plastic. So command takes them away and have them plastic spoons to eat beef stroganoff with. By this time my dad is sick of this crap. People start fighting again though. And my poor E3 dad wasn't about that life. Big command was like yay so. You guys have to eat with your hands now. It's been around 30 years and he refuses to even smell beef stroganoff. Last time we made it was in 2013. And we were on vacation. He came into the house, looked at us eating the stroganoff, and goes I am ordering pizza for me. Good times. I didn't serve, but I tuned the turbine generators on Virginia class subs for the contractor who built them. The color was surprising to me, key lime pie green, everywhere. I guess they did a study to figure out which color was least likely to drive people insane when confined for months in a steel can. Kinda made me wonder what would happen in a bright orange sub. Imagine a bright red sub. Served on a Los Angeles class. There are no windows and only a couple people get to use the periscope. So I sometimes tell people that the longest I went without seeing the sun was 52 days. I'm sure there are others who have gone longer. Served on an Ohio class. You don't smell it down there. But the second you are back from deployment you realize all your clothes have an off smell. You learn to recognize noises changing. If ventilation cuts off you know something is wrong. Food can be incredible for what we are given and is one of the most moral boosting things you can have. If the crew is sad or stressed you'll most likely be getting chicken nuggets soon. Formality goes out the window. In most militaries all officers and higher enlisted are greeted by ranks. Underwater it's sub, bro. Unless you are talking to the CO or XO. You only talk through email. And it gets filtered. If someone in your family dies you won't see that email until they can get you off the submarine. Your significant other sends a frisky email the radio man saw it. My dad served on the NR1 in the 90s, super tiny nuclear sub. 
He said that before they'd deploy they'd go on grocery runs and load up with packs of purple Kool-Aid powder and Doritos and ice cream bars for days. Then they were so bored they'd have competitions to see who could drink enough purple Kool-Aid to turn their crap green first. I also heard stories of having to dig a cherry out of a very hairy guy's belly button. Clearly they were busy. Okay. Smell. I was in 1962-1970. Two WW2 era diesel boats. Two nukes. The diesel boats. No showers or laundry at sea. Working uniforms rotting from battery fumes. Sailors had been smoking. Farting. Cooking and sweating through WW2. Depth charging. Korean War and Cold War. Blue sanitary is every night and vented in board. So a sailor tells the cob he wants to bring his pet skunk on board. Cobb says no way. What about the smell sailor says he'll get used to it we did. For longer deployments, space is extra tight because of all the provisions you have to take. So, they will stack cans of food and berthing areas and put rubber mats over them. You're walking on cans for weeks at a time. Also, I haven't gone through all the comments, so I'm not sure if it's mentioned anywhere yet. Sometimes a sailor will have to heart rack. One rack, that is, bed or bunk for two sailors. When you're working 12 hour shifts, you can get away with it. I did two submarine deployments where I had to heart rack. Both times we would make it work by one of us using a sleeping bag and the other one sleeping under the sheets so we weren't smelling each other's sweat. Good times. My experience with hot racks was three sailors for every two bunks. Three guys on rotating six hour shifts. Six on watch. Six for maintenance. And six for sleep. The way it rotates, you don't end up in the same rack twice in a row, and the bed is often warm from the guy who just left it. There's always a constant background noise vibration when the ship is underway due to fans and equipment running. It becomes such a constant background that minor changes can tell you about what's going on with the ship. One of the first indications of a major problem is the sound of the fans coasting down after they've been tripped off. I once woke from a dead sleep to find my elf dressed and running toward the engine room where I work because I subconsciously heard all of the fans near my bunk drop off. No thought. No processing. Just pure instinct and muscle memory oh crap. The fans died. There must be a problem. Report to engine room to fix it. Submarine days are only 18 hours long. So sometimes you're eating spaghetti for breakfast and omelettes for dinner. We mess with a percent if O2 in the air. I can sleep with the ship going up, down and rolling on the surface. But so help me god if the reactor scrams and my rack fan stops. I'm usually awake before the announcement and heading aft. Corn dogs and hamsters. Chicken cordon bleu. Make the best meal. If you're a nub, you best bring treats for checkouts. Candy is fine. Red Bull for the difficult ones. Even if you don't chew bring done dip, it builds goodwill. Last but not least, Down Periscope is the most accurate submarine movie. Now that I've read the comments, a few more things. There's a machine that makes fresh water out of seawater that supplies the whole boat. When it breaks, there is a backup, but its capacity is significantly lower than the primary. That means, while the primary is out of service, no one can take showers. I was a mechanic who owned the primary and the only time I was treated like royalty on a submarine was while I was fixing it. You can smoke cigarettes on a submarine, but it was either one or two people at a time and only in one place on the whole boat, and that room smelled like death got diesel poured all over it. Although you could smoke cigarettes, you couldn't bring any aerosol cans on boat. Lots of gay comments and questions. I am gay, but never did anything underway mainly because there's no privacy and you could get in serious trouble. Demoted. Lose half your pay for months. Restricted to the boat for months. Extra duty. And when I was in. Don't ask don't tell was still in effect so you'd get kicked out of the navy. There were several other gay people on my boat, I'd say 10% of the crew, which I think is higher than the national population. Someone mentioned valuables and the only time I saw someone get the crap kicked out of them was when a guy got caught stealing out of someone's rack. You have no personal space on a sub, so all of your stuff is in a pan below your bed. If you are dumb enough to steal on a sub, prepare to get the beating of a lifetime. It was reported to the captain as him falling down the stairs. The captain didn't ask questions. Dude, your rack is sacred space. Even when asked to get something out of a guy's rack, 
I always felt uncomfortable about lifting the bunk unless I had someone there watching me doing it. I can't even imagine the butt beating that would happen if I got caught going through someone's rack without their permission. My dad was on the New York City long ago. He said when the cruise began they walked around on large cans of food that were laid out on the floors. As the cruise went on they ate the floor. Beginning of the cruise people were hunched over. End of cruise walking a little taller ha ha. I was on a submarine for a week or so for an exercise. What I remember. 1. Lobster. Lots of lobster. We ate really well on boat. 2. I was given a top bunk that had a big pipe running lengthwise over the bed and very close to it. I had to slide into the bed under the pipe, and in order to turn over, I would have to climb out of bed and back into it again. 3. Part of the exercise involved going to test depth, which was pretty deep. Thousands of feet, maybe. As we dove deeper, the titanium steel hull made popping and cracking noises, and it was disconcerting. The captain was nervous during the whole dive, and that didn't make any of us feel much better. 4. As a visitor, I got to go up on the bridge while we were traveling out to sea, and it was as cool as they say. I felt like I was in a war movie. 5. The sub was in Norfolk, and my parents lived close by, so my dad picked me up when we returned. He had also been in the navy, and wanted to see a modern sub. All he could talk about on the way home was how much I smelled like Amine. 6. The officers were run ragged, and you could tell it wore them down. That said, the camaraderie was better than on the surface ships I had been stationed on. For the most part, they're pretty clean. We clean for about 8-10 hours a week in port. 30 plus hours a week at sea. However, there is still some pretty disgusting stuff on board. Personally, I've had crap up to my elbows and also been drenched in some pretty thick liquid that was a mix of blood and rotten seafood. We have a few sanitary tanks on board for holding water until we can safely discharge it. A couple of the tanks are discharged by pressurizing them with air and blowing them overboard. When it's done, you need to depressurize it and, since air is a commodity, you vent the tanks back into the sub's atmosphere. You can basically taste the crap in the air. Water is another precious commodity, so if you have the water running for more than a minute or two in the shower, expect to get yelled at. The jokes about submariners being gay aren't exactly true, though people do become a lot more affectionate, especially when deployed. It ain't gay if you're underway, hugging, cuddling, stroking people's faces, butt grabbing, over the pants HJs, etc. The air in the sub, along with everything that absorbs smells, like clothes, smells like our chemical CO2 scrubber. Amine. It's kinda similar in smell to old cat pee. You stop noticing it after a day or two. But as soon as you pull into port and leave the boat for a day, it's really easy to smell. Hot tricking is still a thing. Three people get assigned to two racks, beds, so you split your belongings between them. Each person getting a third of each rack to store their stuff. Most people don't change their linens. Usually only using their own pillowcase and blanket, so you wind up sharing sheets with two other people for a couple months. Hopefully they're cleanish people. Also, it's perfectly normal, and expected, not to shower every day. The longest I've gone is about 5 days, but I know people who went almost 2 weeks between showers. Over the pants HJ sounds pretty homosexual to me. They are not 100% watertight. Getting rid of unwanted water is a constant effort. I always kept one uniform clean for pulling into port. It smelled nice and clean when I put it on. After tying up and going topside it smelled like the submarine. Not fresh at all. The drinking water never seemed to quench my thirst. We had an air conditioner the size of a large refrigerator that ran on steam, cooled better than reciprocating systems, and was nearly silent. Family grams. Back in the 80s, yes, before the internet, Twitter and email, the only communication from the outside world were messages called family grams. They were messages from your family friends with a total 40 characters including spaces sent to you. My wife developed her own style of acronyms to squeeze as much information into those 80 character messages. If the messages included serious or personal info or were too encrypted, the navy would reject and not send them. Example. Everyone well kids ENJ sports will miss Wiley wife. Means. Everyone is doing well. The kids are enjoying their sports. We miss you. I love you wife's first name. 
We were allowed 8 of these messages during a single deployment. They don't sound like much but when you're under the water for months at a time, they are priceless. Socks and the bilges. If you're new or it was field day, hours of cleaning, you would find random non-matching socks in the bilge. 120 guys go to sea, not a lot around to catch bodily fluids that is not snot. Sometimes said socks would fall out of the outer axe and go to the bottom of the bilge. Like bilge water wasn't already nasty enough. Grandpa was on the Nautilus. Never asked him about it. Sadly, have his tiny, tiny stainless steel personal effects box, earplug inserter, mouth guard, tie bar from Hawaii. Also have a set of keys with tags labeled electrical room. If I ever make it to the museum, I am going to ask if I can use the keys. Didn't serve in one, but I visited many older ones from World War II. They all had just one toilet, for up to 40 men. Imagine the stench at morning. Imagine being the fish that swims by when they empty the sewage. If you are in charge of the kitchen, never ever run out of coffee, you will be demoted. If there is the slightest chance of the mission time running long, plan for it. I have a friend who was in the surface navy, and he said the running out of coffee was an emergency of the same urgency as running out of ammunition. Served on an Ohio class for 5 years, it's an interesting life. To be sure, those are some of the best years I've ever had. 1. We have 9 man bunk rooms. You get used to it. Your bunk has a curtain for privacy. We had a guy get really religious and didn't want to be tempted to beat his meat in his rack. So he removed the rack curtain. Funny thing is, he still did it. We'd hear him and see a slight shadow moving at night. But if you called him out he'd get real defensive about it. Weird dude. He was super proud to tell everyone one day that he jizzed while he took a massive dump. That became known as the Immaculate Ejaculate. 2. I'm sure others have mentioned the showers we take. Get wet. Turn water off. Soap up. Rinse off. We have to make our own water. And it has to drain to a tank that gets pumped overboard. Conserve. 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 3. The food is the best in the navy. But it still could be improved. It suffers from a dire lack of fiber. Much of it has to be processed canned dried. But a vast amount of money is wasted on making crappy cookies, bland cheat cakes, subpar pies, etc. If they saved the money and made a really good dessert every few days, it'd make more sense. Then again, I don't understand why people need to eat dessert with every meal. 4. It's not as claustrophobic as people make it out to be. Our sub is very large. We have a lounge where we can play cards, video games, watch movies, etc. I always brought a laptop with me. 5. I've gone 90 plus days without seeing the real sun. Only through the periscope. It really makes you appreciate things like full showers, a comfy couch, true privacy, not just a curtain, and a good jog outdoors. I've got more if people want. This was interesting. Go for it. Ohio class here. Time goes quickly. Drill 6 days a week and constant training. Nuke ET here. Those months flew by. Also, you develop a closeness with guys that you don't get in a lot of places. Underway my watchmate was almost an enemy. On shore, he is my best friend. You don't find another place where you trust everyone else with your life like that. A friend of mine was on a US sub for a while. The most notable story was that they would be so bored that they would guess combo locks that contained something sensitive. Maybe a gun locker or codes. I don't recall. They would then leave notes for the officer. When found, the officer would throw a fit and set a new combo. Then they start over at 000. Not 100% sure if true, but interesting anyway. My dad was on a diesel boat in the 60s. One toilet for all enlisted men. Only one shower a week unless you were the cook. Making water was much harder without a reactor. Everyone smoked like chimneys. The smell was not of this world. So in the movies, just about every time they show a submarine they have sound effects of a continuous ping. Yay. That doesn't really exist. It's supposed to be a photometer but they haven't made a noise like that since World War II. The photometers are in the higher spectrum and even the non-secure modes on them which are in the human ear spectrum don't sound like that. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.